There are hundreds of active serial killers out there, roaming freely among us for decades. No one knows when they'd strike next and who'd be their next victim. If you're not afraid, you should be. These guys don't have any regard for life and are focusing on what they love the most, killing. Today, we are looking at three active serial killers still out there. The last one could be a case of crooked cops, so stay tuned. The Monster of Udine Italian history is full of unsolved cases, and the mystery of the Monster of Udine is fully placed in the vast and polychrome band of the great Italian crime stories. These serial killers may not be very famous outside Italy, but in the country, there's no one who hasn't heard at least one superstition about the Monster of Udine. Rainy nights, weekends, prostitutes, these are three of the main characteristics that can be traced back to the culprit of this story. The blood trail begins, or rather would begin, on September 21, 1971. Inside her car, Irene Belletti's body lay lifeless. It was secluded near the station of the capital of Frioli. The woman was killed with several cuts. Irene's car revealed numerous fingerprints, perhaps even those of her killer. In another instance, on November 6, 1972, in an apartment in the center of Udine, the body of 52-year-old Elsa Maruzzi was found. The news spoke of a broken skull and strangulation. In December 1975, it was the turn of Eugenia Tilling. The woman's neck was pierced by deadly stabs. That's not all. Sixteen women were killed in total in the province of Udine from 1975 to 1999. So who is this monster of Udine? This simple question has been vague and hovering like a ghost since the 1970s. Experts in the field, profiler, forensic doctors, have tried on several occasions to outline the peculiarities that distinguish the serial killer. It is a man who has deep and sadistic resentments towards women. Therefore, a sense of frustration produced by a traumatic event emerges overwhelmingly. One interesting detail is that all of the victims attributable to the monster of Udine have died from stab wounds located in the anterior or lateral region of the neck. In addition to that, the body of the victims reveals an unmistakable S incision on the belly and abdomen up to the pubis, probably made with the use of a surgical scalpel. Another important detail noticed was the fact that in the first murder, only one cut was counted. In the second crime, the cuts became two, then three on the body of the third victim ascertained and so on. In only one case, the cuts show signs of cauterization. The victims were also killed between the end of January and the beginning of March, always on weekends and rainy nights. Typical distinctive elements of a single hand, of a single criminal direction. It is reported that the monster of Udine feels hatred towards women, but at the same time he knows the female anatomy well, and above all, he carefully chooses his victims defenseless weak women, prostitutes, or women who are likely to be confused with them. The reason could be that very few people would actually miss them or file a missing persons report. The case of the monster of Udine now lies in the drawers and cabinets of the palaces of justice. Serial killers who, after having struck and sown fear among the population, disappear into the shadows and are the biggest threat to society. Who really is the monster of Udine? Is he still alive? we might never know. Colonial Parkway Murders The Colonial Parkway is a beautiful stretch of highway which cuts through the Colonial National Historical Park in southeast Virginia. The parkway is surrounded by woods and has far fewer entries and exits than a typical highway. A typically tranquil area, no one expected the parkway to be the setting for a gruesome string of murders. From 1986 to 1989, four double homicides occurred on or near the Colonial Parkway. All the victims were young, white, and either a romantic couple or could resemble one to an outsider. And as of today, all of the murders remain unsolved. A double homicide is a rare occurrence in and of itself, so four happening so close together has naturally caused many to wonder if a serial killer is behind this series of murders. Or could it be that four separate criminals were executing young people in the area? The first victims were Kathy Thomas and Rebecca Dowski, who had been dating for several months when they went out for food on October 9, 1986. It was the last time they would be seen alive. They were found murdered inside Thomas's 1980 Honda Civic just three days later. 
The car had been pushed down an embankment off the Colonial Parkway. Their throats had been viciously slashed, and they had been strangled to death. The next two victims would be David Knobling and Robin Edwards. It's still unclear what both were doing together the night of their murders in 1987. Knobling had taken Edwards out with his little brother and cousin that day. He dropped Edwards off at her home, but later that night, she snuck out to meet him. On September 20th, 1987, Knobling's truck was found abandoned by the James River Bridge. The keys were still in the ignition, the door was open, and the windshield wipers were gone. Three days later, their bodies washed up on the beach at Ragged Island Wildlife Refuge. They had both been shot in the head execution style. Cassandra Haley and Richard Call were last seen on April 9, 1988. Call's beloved Toyota Celica was discovered at a York River overlook, just a few miles from where Thomas and Dowski had been murdered two years prior. And at last, we have Anna Maria Phelps and Daniel Lauer, who were the only non-romantic couple. On September 5, 1989, their car was found abandoned at an I-64 rest stop. Strangely, the rest stop was on the opposite route of their way back to Virginia Beach. Months later, they were found murdered, wrapped in a blanket in the woods. Their bodies were so decomposed that investigators were unable to determine the cause of death. The police attributed these eight murders to the same killer because of similarities in each case. All of the victims were killed at or near their car, the first three being found at known lovers' lane areas. None of the victims were robbed, and sexual assault did not appear to be a motive in any of the cases. Over the years, police have questioned 150 suspects in connection to these four cases, but all have been cleared. In 2018, a Facebook page, Colonial Parkway Murders, which is run by Kathy's brother, Bill Thomas, revealed that DNA had been found at three of the four crime scenes, which could potentially conclusively link the cases and lead to an arrest. However, there have been many recent developments in these cases. Jeff Davis 8 The details of the Jeff Davis 8 murders are so incredible and so quintessentially by you that if they were fiction, they'd seem a little heavy-handed. Between 2005 and 2009, eight women from the town of Jennings, Louisiana in Jefferson Davis Parish were murdered, their bodies dumped in crawfish ponds and canals in the area. On May 20, 2005, the decomposed body of the first victim, 28-year-old Loretta Lynn Chason Lewis, was fished out of the canal on the outskirts of Jennings. Lynn was a prostitute and battled a crack addiction. Less than a month later, on June 18, another prostitute, 30-year-old Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson was discovered in another canal off Highway South of Jennings. On March 18, 2007, a third victim with a similar profile of the others, 21-year-old Kristen Gary Lopez, was found in yet another canal. This is when the police decided that a serial killer was on the loose. But it wasn't until December 2008, after seven women had already been slain, that a task force composed of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies was brought together in an attempt to finally catch the person responsible for the murders. Authorities told the public they were likely looking for a serial killer. Meanwhile, the saga had expanded past the realm of local coverage and into the national media. A January 2010 New York Times article reported on the fear and frustration felt by family members of the slain women, as well as the missteps of local law enforcement in charge of solving the crimes. Journalist Ethan Brown made a compelling case against the notion that the killings are the work of a single serial killer. The more he dug into the case, the more misconduct and corruption he uncovered within local law enforcement. The same law enforcement participating in the task force supposedly assigned to find these women's killers. Kristen Gary Lopez and Brittany Gary were cousins. Brittany Gary and Crystal Benoit had been roommates. They had all engaged in sex work at the same seedy motel in Jennings. All but one of them, Ernestine Patterson, had been involved with an infamous local pimp and strip club owner named Frankie Richard. At one point, Richard was actually charged in one of the killings, but police dropped the charges when witnesses' statements conflicted and evidence was mishandled. Two other men were charged with killing Ernestine Patterson, but charges against them were also dropped due to the mishandling of evidence. Law enforcement couldn't seem to get it together in these cases. What's most disturbing, though, is the frequency in which these women would offer up information to law enforcement about a prior murder and then wind up dead themselves. 
Brown's investigation revealed that every one of the eight victims was an informant regarding the local drug trade. Perhaps the most disturbing thing Brown unearthed in his investigation is the number of local residents pointing to law enforcement as being responsible for at least some of the murders. It has been several years since the murders and there still hasn't been any leads. Many now believe that even if cops didn't kill anyone, they were crooked and incompetent. Many officers were involved or charged in major drug trafficking deals, obstruction of justice, illegal traffic stops, and found using public funds to make large purchases for themselves since the 90s. The eight women still haven't received any justice, and the case is still being investigated without any leads. What do you think? Was it the work of a serial killer, or was there something more heinous going on? Let us know in the comments! And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our channel for your regular dose of whodunits. See you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, stay warm, and don't get any crazy ideas.